We continue our study uh, this morning in the 23rd Psalm. Somebody asked me how long we'll be here. I don't know how long the Lord leads us uh, to be here. Sometimes people think that this 23rd Psalm is worn out. They say this Psalm is worn out. They say the stuff in the Bible is irrelevant and uh, it's ancient uh, today and there's nothing in there for me. That's what people say. But contrary, my friend, the words of this psalm over the past five or so weeks have given me peace while those around me seem to be at war. This psalm has given me blessed rest and as one who is thirsty and longs for a cold drink on a hot summer day, my soul has been refreshed by the living water of Jesus Christ. The shepherd in this song has led me down the right path. He has comforted me in valleys. I see the light even in those dark trials. So I can say that I am satisfied with the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So don't come telling me. Don't come telling this preacher that this song has worn out and does no good because I won't believe it. Don't put something down unless you have tried. David faced some hard times in life. He did some of it by his own doing. But as, as he pondered over the years of his life, he concluded, he said, The Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not lack any good thing. So let's look at this psalm this morning. We're going to read the first four verses again today. <laughs> Psalm chapter 23, beginning with verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rock and thy staff, they comfort me. And our emphasis again today will be on verse 4. We have focused on valleys the last couple of weeks, of how we end up in valleys, how long these valley experiences last, of how to get out of those valleys. We've talked about valleys, those low times in life the last couple of weeks. Of, but now we're going to continue with the comfort of the shepherd, and we're going to see the particulars of the comfort. The particulars of the comfort. But before we do that, would you bow prayer with me, please? Father in heaven, we now ask for your anointing. We ask for the fit of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we cannot bring this message in our own strength. Lord, that for these to be Jeffrey Ray's words, there would be no good. So Lord, we, we need you during this critical time of the service. We need your Holy Spirit to minister to us during this time. Lord, as we preach, we pray, Lord, that the words that come from my mouth would be thy holy words. And the Lord, that the words would bring us comfort, that the words would challenge us, that the words would pierce our hearts, that Lord, whatever that you see fit, might your Holy Spirit just be. Father, bless, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. I've always been shy and walking around, even years ago as a little boy, walking around in a store and if I were with my parents and we came across someone that they knew, I would usually maybe hide behind my mom. I guess I was scared. I don't know, I was scared. And we see little children, some children are scared of fireworks. And so when the fireworks start booming the 4th of July, a lot of children, oh, they'll want their mom or their dad uh, for protection. They want their mom or daddy to hold them close so that they feel comfort. They feel comfort and hold Some of you fellas, how many of you fellas have ever gone on a date before? I'm sure some, many of you have. I'm not going to ask you about the dates, but if you were dating a girl that you liked, uh, perhaps you played a horror movie at some point on the television, and you know there are scenes in those horror movies where you just know that somebody or something is about to jump out and scare you uh, half to death sometimes with those movies. And, and some of you guys might have been kind of sly watching some of those. You intentionally played movies like that so that your girlfriend might would bury her head on 
on your shoulder. Or maybe even she would slide a little closer to you while the movie was being played. Why? Because she was afraid. Well, that can be scary and challenging places for she. The uncertainty of not having a job. The question surrounding some illness that we've been diagnosed with. The fear of being in an unstable marriage. Valleys are not pleasant experiences for us. They can be quite frightening for you and me as sheep. These valleys, however, like the child hiding behind his mother or the girlfriend clinging to her boyfriend during a movie, they cause us to get closer to the shepherd. They cause us to draw closer to the Lord. And I get closer to Him. Why? Because I'm scared. There's something that has me frightened. And I know that the situation, the valley that I'm in, it's bigger than I am, and, and I can do nothing about it. So I have to rely on the shepherd. But praise God, He is bigger than my problems. He is able to take care of you and me as His sheep. Amen? He is. And so that brings us to the first of three reasons here in verse 4 that we see that David was comforted by the shepherd. He is comforted in times of crisis. He is comforted in those valleys. And the first point that we want to make here is the dwelling of the shepherd. The dwelling of the shepherd. Notice verse 4 again. He says, I will fear no evil. Why? Why will he not fear? For thou art with me. For thou art with me. David will not fear because of the dwelling of the shepherd. That is, the shepherd is with him. And we need to be reminded of this blessed thought, especially in today's world where so many live in constant fear. With recent movie theater and church shootings, sick and deranged pedophiles out on the streets, mass identity theft with personal information at risk to spread of germs and diseases, prescription and illegal drug abuse among our children, continued unrest in the Middle East, financial woes in rural areas. We see a lot of our rural communities just drying up and, and we're concerned about the collapse of society and so much ne negativity and what does the future hold? And so many live in fear. They're afraid of what the future holds. For example, I've seen, I'm sure many of you have seen in the paper and on the news, there are a lot of people that are going around and stealing things out of people's yards. A lot of thieves going around. I read that back in 1975, the number of registered poodles. How many of you have ever owned a poodle before? Has anybody ever owned a poodle before? Okay, a few people have owned some poodles before. Well, back in 1975, here in the United States of America, the number of registered poodles was 139,750. While the number of registered Rottweilers, of course, poodles are kind of cuddly and fun dogs, and Rottweilers are more known, you know, a protective breed, and, and there are only 952 registered in America, Rottweilers, in 1975. But by 1994, the number of registered Rottweilers had increased from 952 to over 102,000, while the number of poodles was cut in half to just over 60,000. So what am I saying? An increase in guard dogs, a recent dramatic increase in concealed weapons permits all lead to a lot of uncertainty. Folks feel the need for protection. There's fear of what might happen without any defense. And I'm not against uh, individuals carrying guns as we see the shepherd here carrying a rod and staff. Isn't he's carrying that. But truly, the only preservative from fear is the presence of the shepherd, the Lord, in your life and my life. You see, the problem with the United States of America today is not the need of more gun control. The problem in the state of South Carolina is not the Confederate battle flag. The problem with our nation, the problem with our state, the problem with Baltimore member counties today is that we need the shepherd. We desperately need the dwelling of the shepherd among us. I'm talking about people that are constantly and fervently seeking the Lord. That's what we need today. And guess what? We don't have it. We don't have it. Notice that the psalmist never says here that there would be no evil. In fact, he acknowledges that there is evil. He says, I will fear no evil. 
This is an evil world that you and I live in. The prince of this world, Satan, is doing all that he can to destroy families. He's doing all that he can to split churches. He's doing all that he can to weaken nations. He's trying to make you worry yourself sick. He's trying to make you doubt your salvation. He's trying to get to, to get you to, to convince you to walk away from your faith and to get you to quit coming to church altogether. That's what he would like to do for you. That's the best that Satan, the devil, old Slewfoot, as Miss Susie May would say, that's the best that he has to offer for you is to destroy you and bring you down to death and then to hell eternally with him. That's the best that he has for you, church. That's the best. So you can either follow him to death or you can follow the shepherd. You have to make a choice. The Bible says that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The Bible says that iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold. And so that's the day, that's the time that you and me are living in this day. In this month of August, this year, 2015, it's evil. And so some say that this old 23rd Psalm, this old Psalm that some say is worn out, this old Psalm that some may say does no good, this old Psalm that comforted David many centuries ago, this same old Psalm has some words for you and me, some words of comfort today in the year 2015. And those words are, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He is with us today. You don't have to fear. He is with us. The shepherd, the presence of the shepherd, the dwelling of the shepherd, he is with his people, the sheep. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, I'm one of his sheep. He is my shepherd. He is my sheep. He is my defender. He is my provider. He is my companion. He is my leader. So it is his responsibility to take care of the sheep. It's not mine. He takes care of his sheep, and he does a great job taking care of his sheep. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters there are roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swell, so all hell may break loose on this earth. Everything that I know and that you know may change. Everything that I'm used to may be lost. Everything that I hold dear may slip out of my hands. The stars may fall from the sky. The sun may refuse to shine on my face. Oh Lord, no matter what the eyes that you gave me may see, no matter what the ears that you place on me may hear, no matter what my mind may think, no matter what my heart may feel, no matter the circumstances around me, because I know you are with me. That's the wonderful promise of the shepherd. No matter what's happening around me, he is with us. And you see, there's no comfort like knowing the shepherd is to you. There's no comfort like that. Now, the psalmist was assured that if God was with him, he had nothing to fear. I wonder, do you feel the same way this morning? Do you have that same assurance or are you living in fear today? Do you need the comfort of the shepherd about something in your life? You see, death is something that many lie awake to think about. At night, they live in fear of facing it. Are you afraid of death? You see, the dying man, as we picture a, 
a man, perhaps on a hospital bed, in his final moments. The dying man seems to go into that vat, that dark valley of death alone. His friends accompany him as far as they can. Then they must give him the parting hand. They cheer him with their voice until he becomes death of all sins. They cheer him with their looks until his eye becomes dim and he can see no more. They cheer him with fond embrace until he becomes insensible to every expression of earthly affection. And then, there he is and seems to be alone. But, but, my friends, the dying believer is never, ever, ever alone. The shepherd is with him in that valley and will never leave him. And upon his arm he can leave. And upon his presence he will be covered until he blinds himself in the splendor <laughs> of heaven. So all that is needed to get rid of those tears of that valley of death for me to remember that are with me. They are with me. He is with us. In life, He is with us. In death. So we don't need to live in fear of death unless we do not know. I wonder about you. If your heart beat for the last time, right where you sit this morning, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Where would you go? Where would you spend all of eternity in your heartbeat the last time? Trust in the good shepherd. He'll give you peace. He'll comfort you in life and death. And so the first reason that David was comforted and the first reason that you and I are comforted is the presence of the shepherd, the dwelling of the shepherd among us. His presence makes all the difference. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's so much more that we could say about His dwelling, but we're going to move on quickly now. The next two won't take quite as long. Now notice in verse 4, the defense of the shepherd. So we have the dwelling of the shepherd, His presence with us. Now we have the defense of the shepherd. David says in verse 4, Thy rod comforts me. Thy rod. The rod was a weapon of power. It was a weapon of authority. It was a weapon of defense. And it was about two feet long and it had a sharp point on one end and a fork like on the other for securing snakes. And some rods had a ball or a knot with a stones or metal pounded into it. So it was used. It was a force. It was a weapon of force. And it could be used for a number of reasons. Maybe to discipline the sheep, throwing at them whenever they got too close to maybe poisonous weeds and the rod was used to fight off intruders and thieves, wild animals, and so a good shepherd could take this rod and could throw it with accuracy and force. And so the shepherd also used the rod to examine the sheep and to count on them. He would take that rod and he would pull back that wool on that sheep. So he would look at that sheep carefully, see if there are any parasites on the sheep. He'd also pull back that wool looking for any wounds that that sheep may have on it. And you see, for Christians today, this is the rod right here. The rod is the Word of God. This rod has power, has authority, and it's our defense. And it comforts us, but it also chastises us. This rod disciplines us. And, and like the shepherd using that rod to search the sheep, the Word of God searches you. And, me, and, and it helps us to examine ourselves. So I find comfort today in knowing that my shepherd has a rod to protect me. So the comfort in the shepherd, we find comfort in the dwelling of the shepherd, we find comfort in the defense of the shepherd. And now thirdly and finally, we find comfort in the discipline of the shepherd. In verse 4 he says, Thy staff comforts me. Thy staff comforts me. This was the longer stick of the two. And it had a crook on the end, or a hook, and this was the more gem of the two sticks. The rod was the weapon of force, and, and this uh, staff was more of the gem stick, and with an emphasis with, the, with this being on support. 
The shepherd might have used, used this to, to maybe, as he was used that staff to lean upon when he got into rugged terrain trying to walk. He used it also to draw the sheep closer and to intimate fellowship. He would use it to guide the sheep in the right direction. He might have tap on them whenever they started to stray a little bit. And the sheep were comforted by the staff because it was used to pull them out of thorns or other dangerous situations. With this staff, can you see the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives with this shepherd's staff? The Holy Spirit supports us. The Holy Spirit strengthens us. The Holy Spirit draws us together as the staff did the sheep. He guides us. He comforts us. And He untangles us whenever we get into predicaments. Now as we conclude and prepare for the invitation, we've talked about the comfort of the shepherd. Specifically, the particulars of the comfort. The dwelling of the shepherd, that is His presence. We've talked about the defense of the shepherd, that is His rod. And we've talked about the discipline of the shepherd, that is His staff. As you examine your life situation, think about where you are in life right now. Where you are if you're a teenager. Where you are as a young adult or middle-aged adult or a senior. Think about your life as it stands right now. What are you in dire need of when it comes to the shepherd? What are you and I need? Which of these? What need of the shepherd do you have? Do you need His presence in your life? Do you have a need to be defended? You've got some people or some things coming against you. Do you need the defense of the shepherd? Perhaps you need to be disciplined because you've strayed. Perhaps you feel weak today. Maybe you're weeping on the inside about something like you feel forsaken by someone that you love. Here's what Jesus said. Notice this verse carefully in John chapter 14, verse 18. Jesus said this, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's a promise from our Lord. It's a promise from the shepherd. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You see, there are times in life, I know some of you mothers and fathers have gone on to be with the Lord, but there are times in life that a hug from mom or dad doesn't give you. There are times in life that a call from a friend just falls short of lifting us up. There are times when the words of our spouse fail. To comfort. There are times in life that only the shepherd can bring you comfort and me comfort. I wonder this morning. Do you need to call upon the shepherd? There are times in life that it seems no one else can understand what we're going through. Do you need the shepherd? Call out to him, for he promises to come. Maybe you need to call out to him to save you today. You know your sin. You know that you need Jesus in your life. Call out to Him. He promises to come. What comfort He gives to His sheep. Do you need the presence of the Lord, the shepherd, in your life? Perhaps, you know, sometimes uh, the sheep would start dragging a little bit. And uh, they would start moving a little slow. And sometimes that shepherd would have to take the rod and hit those sheep to get them to pick up the pace a little bit. And give them a pop or two with the rod to get them going. You. Have you been a little slack late when it comes to your spiritual walk? I wonder, is the Lord telling you with His rod, the rod that the shepherd's using today, is He telling you to pick up the pace? Is He telling you to pick up the pace in your spiritual walk? Maybe you've been out of fellowship lately. <laughs> out of church, sort of doing your own thing. Maybe He's taking that staff, His Holy Spirit, and saying you need to be among the brethren and the sister. You need to be with my people. You need to be with my people. Or maybe he's pulling you back into fellowship with other sheep by using his Holy Spirit. What is the shepherd saying to you today? 
He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You are you in need of comfort this morning. Would you bow in prayer with me, please, Father in heaven? We thank you for this song. Oh, this song is not worn out. It was good enough for David. It's good enough for me. So, Lord, I pray now as your Holy Spirit looks beyond the flesh and the bones and looks into the very depths of our souls this morning. What is our greatest need? Lord, if our souls need to be saved, help us, Lord, to come to the shepherd. You're calling out to your sheep to come. Help them to come, Lord. Father, for those that aren't one of your sheep, uh, Lord, we pray that they would come. For Lord, those that are one of your sheep, those that are your children today, those who are on the way to heaven, perhaps we've been hit with the rod this morning. We've been reminded that we've been slack in our spiritual world. Lord, we haven't been witnessing as we should. We haven't been praying as we should. We haven't been sharing the gospel. We, we haven't been reading your word. I haven't been the husband some man might say that you've called me to be. Or I haven't been the father. I haven't been the wife. I haven't been the mother that you've called me to be. Perhaps some teenager here is fearful of something that they're dreading with school. I don't know. You know the hearts and minds of these people. So Lord, I pray that you go now. Speak to their hearts. Lord, I pray there's one here that doesn't know. You help them to come make a public profession of faith in Jesus Christ right now. Lord, if there's one here that's straight and just like to rededicate their life to you, help them to come. Lord, perhaps someone would just come and build the altar and say, I just want to thank the shepherd. I want to thank the Lord for being my shepherd, for leading me, for guiding me, for loving me. And, and although that rod hurts sometimes, I thank Him for disciplining me as we talk about things tonight. Those who the Lord loves, He disciplines, He chases. Oh, Holy Spirit, do Your work now, we pray. 